God's got it. He's got it. Everything you need. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just hand them to me. I know the order. Just hand them to me, please. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of <laughs> Philippians chapter number four. Chapter number four. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Those are our verses 13 through uh, 20, but I'm not going to read all of them. I'm only going to read uh, 18 to 20 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's see what happened there. Okay. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epirotheus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, pleasing to God. And verse 19, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory as Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank and praise you right now for your word. We thank you for the unction of the Holy Ghost wherewith we have received it, O oh God, with an anointing that makes preaching easy because it's more of you and less of us in the name of Jesus. Anoint the ears of the hear that they may receive your word, that they will be not only hearers, but doers of your word, that they will ingest it, digest it, and rise up and manifest it in their daily walk activities, attributes, and attitudes, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let them be built up in their most holy faith, hearing your word, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Help us not to be forever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, but help us to get it. Help us to get it, oh God, for the letter killeth, but the spirit is what will make it come alive in us in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we'll try to go quickly. First of all, just as an introduction to this uh, lesson, the Bible lets us know that God is very familiar with you. You might have some friends and some close inner circle people, but God is very familiar with you. Amen. In spite of what kind of living condition you're in, in spite of what kind of bills and weights and problems and trials, God is a very familiar friend. He's a present help even in the time of trouble, the word of God says us. So he's familiar with all aspects of our lives, listen, including our thoughts, our words, our actions, and our future. Psalms 139 verse 15 and 16 says, we see the proof that God knew us and our substance even while we were being formed in our mother's womb. Think about that. While he was knitting us together, the cells, the tissues, the organs, and the organ systems that make up your organism. Psalms 139 verses 1 to 6 says, a man describes God's knowledge of us, including knowing when we sit down and when we rise up. Hallelujah. I said, when you sit down and when you get up, amen, regardless of whether you're sitting down to eat, whether you're sitting down to watch TV, whether you're sitting down to do your personal duty, he know when you sit down and when you rise up. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Each one of you. But you heard Sister Sonia sing, his eye is on that tiny little sparrow. Hallelujah. And so God sees, God knows what is going on. This means there is no move you can make without God having knowledge and knowing that you are going to make it. Hallelujah. Even before you make it. Acts 17 and 27 says that God is not far from any one of us. Hallelujah. We that are spirit filled. Amen. We have to know that we are even filled with God's spirit. So God is not only with us, he's in us. Because what did he tell the disciples? 
I'm dwelling right now with you, but I'm going to be in you. Hallelujah. So this is how familiar God is with us. Oh, let me tell you what the thought is for today. When, with the scripture 19, my God shall supply all of your needs. Amen. It is God can and shall finance your circumstance. And our subtopic is he'll supply your needs. Amen. But that's the way God first gave it to me. God can and shall finance your circumstance. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 16 and 8 says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken. I will not be all upset, disturbed, perturbed, for he is right beside me. Do you hear that? Write that down and go back and read it. Put it on your refrigerator or something. He is right beside me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. Think about it. Our thoughts are not even hidden from God. Job said in uh, Job 42, he says, no thought can be withheld. Oh my God, my God. No thought can be withheld from you. So we are warned, amen, by the word of God to guard our thoughts, to guard our minds. He said, put a girdle on that thing. Don't let it be flabbing all over the place. Hallelujah. Amen. Gird up the loins of your mind. Direct your thoughts on things that are lovely, that are kind, that are of a good report. He said, think on these kind of things. So I pray, Lord, direct me, feed my mind so I can feed your sheep because you, Lord, know them and what they need. That's what I pray. That's what I pray. Because in my phone, you know, the Lord has given me so many messages. I got backup messages, Sister Diane. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just letting the, asking the Lord, okay, which one this time? Amen. Some been sitting for a long time because he'll keep giving me something fresh and something new. Hallelujah. Amen. But Lord, you know who's going to be on Zoom. Lord, you know who's going to be on the phone line. What do they need? Hallelujah. Feel me with something to feel them and feed me with something to feed them. So our message today is not limited when I say he can finance your circumstance. We want you to know finance is talking about God's provision, fulfilling, sustaining, his defending, being the uh, there for you in every situation, being that very present help. He's your defender. He's your protector. He's your paraclete. He's your attorney. He's your doctor. He is able to do what you need him to do in that circumstance. He is better than a man, a, a, a friend. He is better than the father. What did Jesus say? If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, if they ask you for a rock, you're not giving them, I mean, a bread, you're not giving them a rock. If they ask for a fish, you're not going to throw them a scorpion. If you got sense enough to be good to your children, how how much more will our heavenly father give good gifts, give what the people need, give the Holy Ghost, amen, to them that just ask him. So ask and it shall be given. Seek not and it will be open. So our text in uh, Philippians 4, 18 and 19, but my God, it starts out with a conjunction, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So we constantly, folks are always rattling that off. How many have heard somebody rattle that off? How many of you have rattled that off about my God going to supply all our needs? But some folks, that ain't for you. Some folks, he wasn't talking about you and he wasn't talking to you when he said that verse. So since it starts with but, let's go back and see what the but is there for. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read the previous verses. He says, hallelujah, you Philippian church, you Philippian people, you have sacrificed as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. So don't be involved in, hallelujah, witchcraft. Don't be involved in idolatry. Don't be involved 
God in being rebellious to what God has told you to do. Amen. Because these people, hallelujah, have, have, have done sacrifice. They have gone out of their way to give God, amen, what he was due. So he's addressing this to them, hallelujah. It's not meant for everybody. The previous verse, Paul talks about all those things and everybody who has uh, 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 not given to him. He talks about them first. He talks about people who have not given him one dime, amen, to him him and his mission. He talks about those who have not been benevolent or anything, amen, to advance his ministry. He talks about, amen, you know, in other words, I, I, I had travel expenses, I've had housing expenses, I've had clothing expenses. Only this one church, the church at Philippi, the Philippians, amen, hallelujah, the church of brotherly love, Amen. Filio, that's what they call Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Amen. In the Latin, filio. Amen. It's talking about brotherly love, not eros, not sexual, erotic love, but you have shown filio love. You have treated me like one of your real blood brothers. So it is to this body and these individuals that Paul is speaking that is why the statement starts with a but hallelujah, you have supplied me, you have given out of your lap, you have communicated with me more than lip service, you have, amen, given your natural to provide for the one who has given you and fed you and instructed you and prayed for you and travailed for you and traveled around preaching to you, amen, you have given to me. And so he said, even though you have given given out of your lap, even though you have made an empty spot, amen, of what was in your cupboard, you made an empty spot of money that was in your bag because you want to see, amen, that the brick killing children have, amen, more than dirt and mud to sit on. You want to make sure they have shoes on their feet. You want to make sure, amen, so you participated in the benevolence of the ministry as well. He said, you've done it with your natural so God is going, amen, how you, we've done it spiritually to you. So you have returned it or reciprocated, amen, with your natural. So now you are the ones, you are the ones who gave of natural. And now my God, notice he says, my God. Hallelujah. He said, but my God, Paul said, but my God, the one God, the one who revealed to me individually and directly who he is. I mean, the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in a body. My God, the express image of the invisible God. My God, the mystery of godliness. The, my God, the God that was manifest in a body of flesh. Oh, hallelujah. 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 My God, hallelujah. The one who does not dwell in temples made by hands, but he'll show up when you come together to celebrate and praise him in a meeting. Hallelujah. My God that fills all space and time. My God who stepped out of a man eternity into time to shed his blood for mankind. I'm telling you, my God, that's the one that's going to supply your need, Sister Angela. That's the one that you're looking to. Amen, Sister Diane. That is the one, Sister Sandra, that you're calling up on. Paul, Hallelujah. And I come to tell you that God told me to remind you that my God, this God, Jehovah Jireh, this hey. God, Jehovah Rapha, this yes. God, Jehovah Nisi, this Hallelujah. God, Jehovah Roha, this yes. God, Jehovah Mikadesh, this yes. God, Jehovah Sikanu, this yes. God, Jehovah Shama, this yes. God, Jehovah Shalom, this God is the one Hallelujah. that is going to supply all of your needs, Hallelujah. your finance and circumstance. He will be there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It said the bottom line, his bottom line, according to his bottom line, which ain't got no bottom. Hallelujah. He's going to supply your needs according to his bottom line. You know how you get your bank statement and you show how much was 
was put in and how much was taken out. Then they show you what your available balance is. I want you to know his available balance is still inexhaustible. Hallelujah, because he's the Lord that breaks fish and speaks fish back. He's the Lord that pours out water and speaks water back. He's the Lord that prays and breaks bread and makes more bread at the same time. Hallelujah. That God shall supply all of your needs. He's going to finance your circumstance. So give as unto the Lord. When you give, give unto as unto the Lord. This is the secret. And quit claiming it as yours once you give it to God. Don't go around saying, well, I don't want them doing this, this, and that with my money. It ain't your money no more. It's God's. It's God's man's. It's God's woman's who is shepherding. If they're misappropriating, don't you know God knows how to deal with them? Look how God ripped position and clothes off of Saul for misleading what belonged to him. Huh? Misappropriating what belonged to God. You see, God had told them, go in and fight the Amalekites. Don't take none of their stuff. I don't want you using the devil's stuff. I don't want you having to uh, stand on the street corner to get your money so you can pay some tax. Uh -uh, I don't want that kind of gift. I don't want you having to lie, to cheat, to scheme. Amen. Uh -uh, I don't want that kind of gift. So don't take nothing they got. Don't take their gold. Don't take uh, their silver. Hallelujah. Kill off everybody. Kill off the things that they've been worshiping and sacrificing to. Thank you, Lord. But Saul, amen, he looked and said, now that cow is too good to be killing. I, I, I think I'm going to take that one. We, we could offer that up to God. Huh? And, 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 and then he looked at that, and he looked at this, and he looked at that. And so when the prophet Samuel came along in 1 Samuel 15 and 20. He began to ask him, okay, did you follow the Lord's instructions? I'm asking somebody today here on October 6th, in Wild Fellowship International. <laughs> Have you followed the Lord's instructions? And some people be so quick. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've done it. I've done it. But come on, think about it before you speak. Think about it before you speak. Have you really followed the Lord's instructions according to what the Lord said do? So, and Saul said unto Samuel, yay, yay, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil the sheep and oxen, the chief, only the good stuff of things, which should have been utterly destroyed. I know they should have destroyed them, but you know the people just wanted some of the good stuff. Hallelujah. To sacrifice unto the Lord. We was going to give it to you, God. <laughs> Amen. The Lord God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and you giving him some kind of silver or gold or you giving him something as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken better than the fat of rams. Amen. In other words, don't be involved in witchcraft or idolatry because he says, to disobey, let's look at verse 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So when you go contrary to doing it how God said do it, you're a witch, you're a warlock, you're involved in witchcraft because you're trying to do it contrary to what God said. He said, and your stubbornness is the same as being idolatry. Stubbornness is an iniquity as idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee and from being king. So he lost his position. He lost his anointing. He lost what he had been called to do because he failed to do it God's way and God's standard. Hallelujah. So don't let the people, don't let the 
crowd. Don't let the family, don't let the pressure, don't let the honey, don't let the money, don't let nothing cause you de to deter from how God said to do this thing. Hallelujah. So what if they don't believe? So what if they uh, reject you? What did Paul say? Holly, am, am I going to stop doing what God said? God forbid. Let God be true and every man a liar. Hallelujah. Let me stand with God and what I'm doing and let me continue to do it God's way. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voices. Look, I ain't fearing nobody up in here, and I'm not going to hear nobody's voice to try to get me to go contrary to the word of God. That's what's happened to some of those big mega churches, mega churches. I used to pray for TV because they'd have a T.D. Jakes on there. Amen. They'd have a different Brian Keith Williams. And these people knew apostolic doctrine and teaching. And I said, oh, Lord, just let them get on there so they can tell the truth. And they got on there. But because of the numbers and because of the increase and because of whatever it brought to them, amen, they stepped back from declaring the whole truth of God. Amen. They watched it every word that came and hung on to every word that came on this one out of this one man's mouth. And I know if he had told them, look, we need to get back to Acts 2. We need to get back to Pentecost. We need to get back to the early church. We need to get back to baptism in Jesus' name. They could have led everybody out to Malibu Beach or whatever beach y'all got out there. Amen. And thousands would have obeyed and got baptized in Jesus' name. But they failed a man to do it because they feared the people and what it might do to their progress. But we want to stand on truth, amen, and rely on truth as, amen, uh, Sister Grandison's, amen, uh, affirmations are going to be coming out and you'll hear more about that. So he says, obedience, your obedience is better than sacrifice because if you obey, I guarantee you, my God shall supply all of your needs. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at uh, Psalms 50 and 11. I'm almost through. I know every bird in the mountains. This is what the word says. And the insects. Oh, my God. Do you hear what the Lord is saying? We hear it, but we're not hearing it. I said, we are hearing this, but we're not hearing it. God, the creator of all things. He says, I know every bird in the mountains and the insects in the field are man. If I were hungry, I would not tell you for the world is man and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Sacrifice. Thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. But to the wicked person, huh? Uh uh, God not gonna help him. He said, I'm gonna destroy you. I'm gonna take away from you what you did have. Oh my God. Another text we want to refer to real quick is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So the Lord said, if you honor me, if you give me from your first, from your first fruit, from your first tenth, hallelujah, and with your substance, that's tithe and offering, tithe and honor. And you know what's interesting? That's Malachi. I mean, that's Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, but then read Malachi 3, 9 and 10. They're both chapter 3, verse 9 and verse 10. Huh? <clears throat> In Proverbs 3, saying, honor me and your barns are going to be filled and your 
uh, 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 vats are going to burst forth with new wine. Then Malachi 3, 9 and 10 says, uh, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. But if you bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough for you you to receive. So both of these are letting you know, honor me, and I'm going to see to thee. Thank you, Jesus. How, won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Won't he will? Won't he do it? Won't he will? Won't he do it? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. About the woman that had a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil, but the man said, make me a cake first. Give God's man first. Amen. The audacity. But she had enough faith to believe that he had been sent from God. He said, look, if you you will do this, your meal ain't going to never run out. Well, how is it not going to run out if I make you a cake and me a cake and my son a cake? This is all I got. How am I going to keep going? How am I going to keep flowing? Just obey God. Just obey God. I guarantee you that oil will never get empty. That barrel will never be empty. So as she poured oil, God poured oil in. The vat was never full to the top. It always stayed a little, but a little goes a long way when God is in it. It always stayed a little meal, but a little goes a long ways when God is in it. Tell somebody, little is much when God is in it. Trust him with your little. Trust him with your little. Deny it. What did the man say? I'm telling you, give me something for you. Give that boy something. Huh? So some people, they run over, they do for their children first. They put their children ahead of God. But God is saying, if you're willing to put me first, first, Amen. Not that first, but the first first. Amen. I'm going to see to the son. I'm going to see to the daughter. You think I'm going to let you give me something and then you sit back, be hungry? Uh-uh. That ain't the kind of God we serve. Thank you, Lord. I hope you get it. I hope you get it. He will supply your needs. He will furnish your circumstances. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then let's look at another uh, uh, example that we have. Amen. There was a woman with a little oil. And she said, my sons are getting ready to be incarcerated. They're getting ready to put my sons on lockdown because my husband has died. He didn't leave things in order. We have no insurance. We don't have no inheritance. We have no 401k. We ain't got nothing but this little bit of oil. But God can use your little bit, your little bit of strength, your little bit of in your right mind, your little bit of time, just give God the little, huh? And so the man asked her, well, what you got? What do you have in the house? What so we can save your sons? What can you give God first? And she said, well, I just got this one pot of oil. He said, bring me the oil. And I, what I want you to do, I want you to prepare for the blessing. Tell somebody, prepare for the blessing. You just send them a text, or you can put it in the chat. Amen. Tell them to prepare for the blessing. If you have obeyed God, prepare for the blessing. This is not talking about blab it and grab it, name it and claim it. Oh no, the devil is a liar. See, sometimes we try to get so far removed that we're going to remove ourselves out of faith. Amen. Yes, we're waiting for the rapture any day now, but until he snatches us out of here, he said, occupy till I come. Amen. How can we occupy if we ain't got nothing to occupy with? Hallelujah. You're not going out empty. He told the children of Israel, yes, you're leaving Egypt, but I'm going to give you favor in the neighborhood. Go borrow. And they gave them all their silver and all their gold. Why are you giving me your silver and all and giving me your gold when you were beating my back and denied me straw to make brick with? Because God will send a blessing and make the devil deliver it unto you. Hey, God have mercy. And so now, just go borrow some pots. Prepare for the blessing. And, and you can prepare for as big as you expected. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
I said, you can prepare for as big as you expected. Hallelujah. If you just want to make room for a scooter, make room for a scooter, Robin. But hallelujah. If I can get, amen, an SUV, I, I, I need a little bit more room than what a scooter needs. So she said, he said, go borrow some pots. He didn't tell her how many. He didn't tell her what he was going to do with them. Huh? You just got to trust God. Trust God. And so the sons and everybody went out and they brought these pots and they probably filled a whole room with pots and they probably thought well, we ain't got nothing to put in them so this is enough this is enough huh how far can you trust God in your problem in your circumstance and so you know what that man of God did he blessed that oil and he just began to pour fill a pot fill a pot fill up a pot fill up another pot bring me down fill up bring me down no fill up fill up fill up any more, any more, but we ain't got no more pots. Okay, well, that's it, huh? That's it. If you had had a hundred more, I could have filled up a hundred more, but it was enough. It was enough to sell. He said, go sell it and pay off your debt. Hallelujah. God supplied, God financed that circumstance. Hallelujah. He so, so fixed those children of Israel that when they left out of Egypt, they are in the wilderness and they're bringing offerings of what they have taken from their enemy. And you know what? Have you ever been in church where the deacon stood up or the pastor stood up and said, wait, don't y'all bring no more money up here. You in line, we're we not going to need yours today. Go on back and say, have anybody ever seen it? Do you think you ever will? <laughs> Woo, do you think you ever will? Uh-uh, you ain't about to see that. But God said, hey amen, that's enough. That's enough. We got all the silver, all the gold, all the garments, all the tapestries that we're going to need right now. And so it says, stop the people. Tell them that they bring no more, for we have more than enough. God is able. That's why I said press down, shaking together, running over. Running over means you got more than enough to finance your circumstance. Thank you, Jesus. And remember, he's talking about you, who he knows familiar. He knows you, the way you take. He's going to supply yours. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Just a little bit more to go. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But he'll make the devil delivery. God gave favor in the midst of oppression and persecution. Hallelujah. Things don't have to be favorable in order for God to give you favor. Write that down. Things does not have to be favorable for God to give you favor. Some people ain't going to go apply for it because, amen, you ain't got all your cards in order that you think that you need. But see, get like, uh, 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 oh, Jesus, Jesus, help my man, help my man, help my man right here, Lord. Thank you. Get like Abraham. Yes, get like Abraham. Get like Abraham. It said after getting this word from God, even though his body was weak, even though he probably had prostate problems and all kind of problems. Hallelujah. Amen. Wasn't nothing getting up. Wasn't nothing rising. Wasn't nothing coming out. Hallelujah. But by faith, he received strength to go on in there and get with Sarah. And even though Sarah was way beyond her time, the childbearing, she was able to bring this child because it was a child of promise, you're going to be able to bring forth that thing, even though the, the, the conditions are not altogether favorable. Huh? Uh, don't worry about your 401k. Don't worry about your FICO score. Is anybody hearing me today that will believe God can do it? Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I believe you. Hallelujah. Hey, so he said, doesn't have to be favorable in order for God to give you favor. That's why if God be for you, who can be against you? Or oh, what does it matter who is against you? The answer is not nobody, huh? Because somebody always going to be against you. But the message to it is what does it matter? Who's against you on the job? What does it matter? Hallelujah. That it's best that passed the deadline. Hallelujah. The housing market is not favorable, y'all. But what does it matter? God can favor you. 
That's whether you're looking for a house or you in the real estate business. Oh, we pray over Brother Sam. We pray over Sister Kay and anybody else that's in the real estate business. Lord, we pray for listings in spite of an unfavorable market in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Your TRW does not look favorable. But what does it matter? Lord God, I pray right now for those who have low uh, 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 credit scores due to various things that have happened. Some had to even come a foul bankruptcy or come nigh it. But Lord, the earth is yours and everybody in it. I pray for favor that they will be able to get those things which they need, not their greed, but which they genuinely need in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God can show you favor and you drive off in something exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. You might get based on your circumstance, but it's on God's favor. It's time to walk by faith, saints, and not by sight. We are about to leave. Hallelujah. But he said, occupy till I come. Hallelujah. We must love, amen, God with all our heart, soul, and might. Love his appearing. Hallelujah. Look forward to his coming, but believe God will finance your circumstance. You have to trust and follow his instructions. He said, give to the poor. You're lending to God. Huh? You who are lending to the to, to, to the poor. You are giving to the poor. You who are, are, are helping the poor. You who are concerned about the poor. Amen. God said, you lending that to me. Huh? And I'm good for it. I'm, I, 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 but I ain't going to give you back what you gave me. Huh? I'm giving you back. Amen. With interest. I'm giving you back. I'm going to top it off. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. You visit the sick, you visit the seniors, you help the widows, you're giving that to God. He says, much as you have done it to the least of these, you've done that unto me. If you give a cup of cold water to a prophet, you're going to receive a prophet's reward. We saw this in the message of the woman that made room for the man of God. And when her son got sick and died, what did she do? She took her son and laid him in the room that was the gift for the man of God. So she laid her problem, her circumstance in her gift. And in her gift, the man of God was able to come in and give her what he had given her because of her gift to him. He was able to give it right back to her. Do you hear what I'm saying? He, amen, was able to pray and said, Lord, this woman did this for me. I didn't ask her to do it. Then I asked her what did she want? And I didn't gave her a son that she didn't even ask for the son. I asked her what did she want? And I promised her the son because you told me to do it. And so Lord, we can't take back a man from her what we gave her because of what she gave us. She still gave us what she gave us. And there is the gift lying in the gift. Huh? You can lie your circumstance in your gift. I said you can lie your circumstance in your gift and believe God that he is going to give back to you. He he perform. See, when you call on God, he will answer you and show you great, unsearchable things which you know is not. How did he know about CPR? How did he know about CPR? Read it. He laid on top of that boy. Man, get yourself off my son. Why you laying yourself off my son's dead body? Ain't nobody never seen nothing like that. But God showed him something unsearchable beyond what he could even think. So that was a downpour from God in his circumstance of what am I going to do? God financed it. God supplied in that circumstance. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? So it's not just money. And he lied, laid on top of that boy, put his mouth to his mouth, y'all, and blew into him and got up. And, and the boy didn't do nothing. He did, went back and did it again. The third time he did it, the boy sneezed. Huh? No defibrillator or what have you said? Uh-uh. No, no bag to pump. 
God downpoured, breathed the breath of life. And the boy came back to life and he handed it back to his mother. Here's your gift back for the gift you have given unto God. God getting ready to give you something back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So trust God even in dire circumstances. Give in your lack. He will press down, shake together, run over, and cause men to give into your bosom. Don't cut yourself short by undercutting God. I set before you blessing and cursing, life and death. You choose this day. Choose life. Amen. Choose life is choosing to give to God, to bless God. Hallelujah. Because when you sacrifice and forsake to put God first, you just can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. Huh? You remember that song? Amen. I'm trying to give it to you as God gave it to me. I spoke it into my phone. Hallelujah. Then sent it to the email and printed it out. God will not allow it. He will take the devil down and out for his name's sake. You're his namesake. And he said he'll do it. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Huh? He does it for his namesake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will not allow it. Allow it. Woo, I got I got upset. Amen. When I heard about Sister Latoya being in that hospital and I thought about Elijah, amen, having to be with the mother-in-law or wherever he was going to have to be. Uh-uh. And I said, oh, hell no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, no. Mm -mm. That, ain't, that, that ain't happening. I got upset. Sometimes you got to get indignant, upset with the devil. We're trying to use profanity, so I put an apostrophe in there. I put H-E-L-L, but I put an apostrophe in there. Huh? <laughs> no! Mm -mm. My God. So don't forsake, because this is God will not allow it. He will take the devil down and out. For his name's sake. No man forsakes mother, father, sister, brother, children for the Lord's sake, for the Lord's house that will not receive 40, 60, and 100 fold in this life. In this life. In this life. Tell somebody in this life. Huh? Can you imagine the little boy having his lunch? Amen. I'm going to finish with this. He's out there listening to Jesus with the crowd. I don't know where his mom and daddy were that they let him out there by himself. But anyway, we got 5,000 people to feed, feed. The Lord asked Philip, how are we going to feed all of them, Philip? And said, so God was just, Jesus was just asking him that to test him because he himself knew what he would do. I think that's St. John 6 and 6. It's definitely in St. John 6. So this he did to prove him or to test him. What you going to do in this situation, Daniel? What you going to do now, Sarah? Huh? Are you going to turn it to Jesus? Or are you going to try to figure it out? Thank you, Lord. And so he said, I'm testing him, but I already know what I'm going to do. And so then he said, well, what do we have here? He said, ain't nothing here, but I have to notice that little boy over there got a lunch. His mama packed for him. And the Lord said, bring it to me. Now, I don't believe he said, bring me the boy's lunch. I think he said, bring the boy over here with his lunch. Huh? That's just the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. I don't think the Lord took the boy's lunch from him. He definitely didn't take the boy's lunch without his permission. He didn't just give me that lunch. No, the Lord has need of your lunch, son. Can we have it? Or come with me. Jesus want to talk to you. It, it was the right, it was done the right way. Amen. But can you imagine the little boy giving his lunch to Jesus and then watching Jesus break all that stuff and feed all these people and it was 5,000 men plus their children and their wives. It wasn't just 5,000 people, so there were at least 15,000 or more. And he done fed everybody and it said it was to the full. So it was like Golden Corral. It was like a, a, a buffet. Huh? They were to the full. 
It wasn't just a bite and you go home hungry. You ever been to a fancy restaurant and you go home hungry after paying a whole lot of money? And so can you imagine even when they took up the baskets of leftovers that that boy didn't get something, some kind of thanks, some kind of something? I believe he probably broke him some off and fed him first before they fed anybody else. And I believe he probably got some of the leftovers. Oh, my God, because that's the kind of God that we serve today. Amen. Amen. When it came to our redemption, no man had the cost to buy back or purchase our freedom. We were sold into sin and the purchase price was life's innocent blood. And there was no blood on the planet, not above the earth, not on the earth, not under the earth, nothing available that could purchase. But thank God he was able to finance. I said he was able to finance the circumstances. He was able to finance, amen, the ransom price. He was able to fulfill, Jesus. amen, the role. He was able to step into the scene, hallelujah. Oh, we were down three to nothing, hallelujah. Death held the grave, had an up on us. Do you hear what I'm saying? Clock ticking down about, amen, the last seconds in the game. But thank God for the game changer. Thank God for the provider that stepped down onto the arena. Hallelujah, wearing a red uh, jersey. Who is this that come from Edom with dyed garments on from Bodra? He that, amen, hallelujah. Oh, look at his appearance. Look at his apparel. Look like he'd been dipped in blood. Look like he'd been in the wine press all by himself. He said, it is I who tread the wine press alone. Couldn't nobody do it. Couldn't nobody help me out. Hallelujah. The zeal of the Lord is going to perform this. God was zealous. God was anxious. God was excited. Lo, I come in the volume of the books. Hey, it's written of me. I'm coming down through 40 and two generations. Lo, I come. Lo, I come in the volume of the books. It's written all about me. Hallelujah. I'm coming to fulfill the will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And he bled and he died and he shed his blood and he paid a price he didn't owe because we owed a debt we could not pay and our circumstance was grim but can somebody say thank God for the blood can somebody say thank God for the blood can somebody say thank God for the blood that washes white as snow uh, and that washes white as snow uh, and then for three days uh, I said the corner was called in uh, hallelujah they began amen to examine the body uh, they began to autopsy the body uh, let's cause the reason uh, why did this man die? Uh, I see adultery, uh, but that ain't his adultery. Uh, he died for somebody else's. Uh, I see lying. I see shoplifting. Uh, I see all kinds of mess, uh, but it ain't his mess. Uh, so death, uh, you got to let him go. Uh, release him. Uh, hallelujah. He ain't got to pay no bond. Uh, he's free. Uh, hallelujah. And if the Lord shall make you free, you will be free indeed uh, because the circumstance has been financed by the blood of Jesus. Unmute and shout hallelujah. Unmute and say praise God. Unmute and say thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. You paid the price the uh, for you, me. Uh, you thought I was a uh, Hallelujah. 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 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your blood in the name of Jesus. See all that are on, hallelujah, Zoom. We happen to have a visitor on the phone. We happen to have a visitor on the phone. We happen to have someone, amen, you never receive uh, this blood. It's available. It's available. There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. All you got to do is, amen, come and be baptized. Be like, amen, hallelujah, the eunuch. He said, look, there's some water. What's stopping me from being baptized? If it's deep enough for me to lay out in, wash me, hallelujah, from my sins. Take it away. Take it away, dear Lord. Take it away from me. Amen. If you're on the phone and you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody said Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but you want to come back and get it in the name of. Hallelujah. And the name is not Father, Son, or Holy Ghost, but the name is Jesus. The whole family in heaven and in earth is called by his name. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. We're all born in sin, shaping in iniquity, even amen. newborn babies. Amen. But they're innocent because they're without understanding. So if something happened to them, they're good. Hallelujah. Because we serve a righteous God. But those, amen, who have come into accountability where you can understand that Jesus died for you, that he shed his blood for you, and that you need to get out of Adam and over into to Jesus. And you do that by being born again of the water and of the spirit. Then you are commanded to repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the removing of your sins and ye will be receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For except a man be born of water and of spirit, you cannot go to heaven. You cannot see the kingdom of God. So if you have not done that, hallelujah to God. Amen. We need you. Amen. To unmute right now on the phone. And those of you that are viewing this at a later time over YouTube, amen. Let me give you a number and that is 707 642 2391. If you need to uh, rewind so you get it, amen. Rewind so you get it. But it was 707 642 2391. That is Emmanuel Temple Apostolic Church. Amen. Just speak to someone or leave a message. Your name, your number, where you live, and the fact that you want to be saved. You want to be born again. You want your sins washed away. You want a fresh start a whole new you, a whole new beginning. In spite of all your mess ups and mishaps and your Adamic nature, it says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a whole new creation. All things are passed away and behold, all things, all things, all things are new. Reversing every curse, every family curse, including the Adamic nature and sin that Adam got us into. Don't you want a new start? Don't you want a whole new beginning? Call that number, Emmanuel Temple Apostolic Church. Amen. Give your name, your number. You can even say, I want to talk to Evangelist Prince. Can you get me in touch with her? They will give you my number and I will pray for you personally. I will direct you to a place near you where you can be baptized and have your sins washed away in the name of Jesus.